Number 10. Devil Horns We've all seen some pretty awful tattoos, right? Whether it was someone that decided to get their lover's name somewhere a little too visible and then they broke up, only to have that name inked on their body for the next lover to see, or maybe something less romantically complicated but equally as bad. Maybe you've seen someone with a horribly misspelled tattoo, like no regrets. I mean, there's certainly some irony to that one. A man named William Bottoms Jr. was in a bit of trouble after being suspected of committing a horrendous double murder. Things weren't really going that well for Mr. Bottoms, and his lawyer was having a bit of a hard time defending this guy because he had tattoos all over his face that made him look like a complete lunatic. You're familiar with the phrase, don't judge a book by its cover, but this was a situation where the jury was definitely going to be doing that. In fact, the defense attorney said before the trial even began that he hoped the jury would judge his client based on his character and not the color of his skin, especially because his skin seemed to be mostly green, covered in multicolored ink, and honestly it was kind of terrifying. I'm not saying he looked reptilian, but if there was a contest for looking like a mutant ninja turtle without a shell, William Bottoms would probably win. With tattoos like this, it's hard to look innocent. Bottoms was being charged with the murders of two men from Baton Rouge, who were found shot in the back of the head in 2017. His lawyers hoped that jurors would ignore his face tattoos, including the devil horns inked over his eyebrows. But in the end, it's hard to ignore the horror someone purposely puts on their face. Bottoms was found guilty on both counts and sent to jail. So I guess you really can hit rock bottoms. Number 9. The Red Rum Carjacker there's a guy named Daryl Goulot, and he apparently liked the movie The Shining based on the Stephen King novel of the same name so much that he got red rum tattooed on his forehead. Of course, and spoiler alert here if you haven't seen The Shining, but red rum spells murder backwards. It's obviously a really weird thing to get tattooed on your forehead, but Daryl is exactly the type of weirdo who would get such a thing. He was recently jailed for 30 years after pleading guilty to a case in which he carjacked a senior citizen while threatening them with a jagged piece of glass in New Orleans. According to the Huffington Post, this guy also tried to rob a lady with a knife before he attacked the senior citizen. Daryl has a rap sheet kind of a mile long with plenty of felony convictions for obscenity and possession with intent to distribute. He has a serious drug issue, but he never did say why he got a giant tattoo of murder spelled backwards on his forehead. If anything, it just made him a more obvious criminal. So have you seen The Shining? And if you did so, did you immediately say, Red Rum, Red Rum, in that creepy, possessed little kid voice? Number 8. Freckle Fail A 21-year-old TV star in Australia recently had the tattoo fail of a lifetime after she tried to do a DIY beauty hack. Her name is Tilly Whitfield, and she made the horrible decision of trying to give herself freckles by stabbing her face with a sewing needle dipped in tattoo ink. She learned the technique from a video on TikTok, which is obviously the best place to get health advice, right? The problem is that stabbing yourself in the face with a sewing needle and tattoo ink is not exactly the safest thing to do. After stabbing all across her face with the needle, she broke out in horrible lesions. Her face became disfigured and scarred. She suffered from a temporary loss of vision in one eye because her face swelled up so badly and she got sick from an infection and then was hospitalized. Somehow bacteria got into the self-inflicted wounds and just completely destroyed her face. Even after trying to remove the hideous scars, her face will never quite look the same. But of course, this was pretty easy to see coming. After all, she admitted in an interview that she really didn't know what kind of ink to get, so she just ordered some off eBay. Tilly, you should probably stay off the internet for a while. Have you seen this wild idea trending on TikTok? Would you ever want to try it yourself? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 7. The Wrong Coordinates A woman from St. Louis, Missouri wanted to get a tattoo of Sedona in Arizona apparently to commemorate its natural beauty. Sedona is a very beautiful place, so it wasn't necessarily the worst idea in the world. The woman thought it was a cute idea for a tattoo design. She was planning on getting the coordinates of Sedona tattooed on her shoulder blade. So she went to the tattoo artist, gave the guy the coordinates, and got the tattoo. The issue was that afterwards, when she typed those coordinates into Google Maps, she realized she'd kind of messed them up. Instead of getting the exact position of Sedona tattooed on her, she got the coordinates for some random spot in the middle of the South Pacific Ocean, somewhere near the coast of Chile. So what happened? Well, she messed up the longitude. The tattoo kinda marked the right spot, only a whole lot more south. Number 6. Skinhead Murderer 
A crazy skinhead, 38-year-old Curtis Michael Algier, who killed a Utah correctional officer during a botched escape attempt from jail in 2007, has avoided the possibility of a death sentence after pleading guilty to murder in the brutal slaying of Steven Anderson. Without a pair of plastic flex cuffs to use, the correctional officer removed the inmate's metal handcuffs so that he could undergo an MRI scan of his lower back. Algier, who was serving a sentence for burglary and forgery, was somehow able to overpower the officer and then shot him twice. And you know what? Nobody even felt even the slightest little bit of sorry for this guy. You've never seen someone so covered in beyond aggressively racist tattoos. Literally from his head to his toes. This guy had swastikas tattooed on both of his cheeks. Skinhead, clearly tattooed on his forehead, and just about every other classic skinhead tattoo somewhere else on his body. It's no surprise prosecutors didn't go easy on Mr. Curtis Algier. It's kind of hard to feel sorry for somebody when they're literally tattooed with hate. And besides, he did shoot the officer to death with his own gun. Hopefully, this time they lock Curtis up somewhere a bit more secure. Number 5. Tattoo Blindness It's called sclera tattooing, and it's when a person gets ink injected into the white part of their eye. While I did say it's pretty popular, by popular I kind of mean a handful of crazy people have attempted it. To get your eyeball tattooed, you can expect a fair amount of pain and swelling. However, in 2017, a tattoo model from Ontario got even more than that after getting the procedure done. The eyeball tattoo went horribly wrong and the needle penetrated too deep into her eyeball, leading her to be partially blind, to the point where she is considered removing her eyeball altogether. The poor woman now has a completely black eye instead of white, and she can only see out of one of them. Upon investigation, it was also discovered that the tattoo artist didn't even use the right type of ink to perform the procedure and could face three years in prison. It's definitely more of a creepy look. But then again, that's exactly what she was kind of going for in the first place. She posted a picture on her Instagram with the caption, I don't care what people say, the rush is worth the price I pay. I get so high when you're with me, but crash and crave you when you leave. We aren't really sure if those are lyrics to her favorite song or if that's how she really feels about her new look. But unfortunately for this poor tattoo model, doctors are fairly sure she'll soon lose vision in her other eye as well. Number 4. The Wrong Irish An American woman was trying to get in touch with her Irish roots. To do this, she thought what better way than getting a tattoo in traditional Irish Gaelic? And what better way to announce herself to the world as the most basic kind of person than to get live, laugh, love tattooed on her own back? The woman's plan was to translate live, laugh, love into Gaelic and get the words tattooed on her spine. The issue here is that literal translation isn't usually the best. If you want a realistic translation, then you need to speak to someone who actually knows the language. Instead of getting Live Laugh Love, the woman had Bo Gary Gra tattooed down her back. One of the words she got right, Gra does mean love. However, Bo means alive instead of live. And finally, the middle word Gary doesn't even mean anything. The closest translation is stud horse. So instead of getting Live Laugh Love, she ended up getting a live stud horse love tattooed down her back in a foreign language. Maybe next time she should just stick to English. Do you know anyone who's got a tattoo in a language that they don't even speak? Come on, we know you do, everyone does. Hey, feel free to tell us about your smart friends in the comments section down below. Or maybe you want to use a different word than smart, I don't know. Number 3. 27 Times Arrested There's a man from Florida who looks pretty rough. I know this really isn't surprising, but it does deserve a spot on our list. His name is Charles Easter, and according to the Daily Mail, he's been arrested at least 27 times. His most recent arrest was for disorderly conduct in Fort Lauderdale, after he became unruly while visiting his friend in an emergency room at the local hospital. The police were called and he had to be hauled out, and he went kicking and screaming. But here's where Charles Easter becomes kind of a legend. He has the word Hala tattooed on his forehead in huge letters. He also has the words I bet you won't tattooed on his back and a few teardrops coming down from the corner of his eye. Nobody knows exactly where this guy came from or why he has such ridiculous tattoos, but if you're lucky, you can find him walking around in Florida wasted out of his mind and wearing a bikini. And no, it doesn't look super good on him. Oh, and also Charles goes by another name, Hala Beyonce Alicia Keys and Riri. So how is this guy even real? Number 2. Left Paralyzed A woman named Nancy Anderson was just 20 years old when she decided to get a butterfly tattooed on her wrist. How many girls do you know with a butterfly tattoo? 
Nancy's big mistake here was going to an unlicensed tattoo studio, because all the legit studios were fully booked. It was a pretty bad decision not to wait on her part, seeing as after she had the cheap butterfly tattoo jabbed onto her wrist, she came down with an infection that sent her to the hospital and almost killed her. Yikes. When Nancy woke up the next day, she couldn't even feel her arm. She was left paralyzed from the botched tattoo. Nancy went straight to the hospital and was given urgent treatment and put on a drip of antibiotics to treat what had become a festering wound on her wrist. Somehow, the unlicensed tattoo artist had poisoned the poor girl and left her with a permanent scar rather than a cute tattoo. It now looks absolutely hideous, but at least doctors were able to cure her infection. Maybe next time you'll wait for a professional, Nance. If this happened to you, would you ever even try to get another tattoo? I probably wouldn't. Number 1. Swimming with Ink they say you're not supposed to go swimming with a fresh tattoo. Most people think it's just one of those silly rules that you don't need to abide by, like not getting too much sun on a new tattoo, or like not swimming after you've had a full meal. Well, one guy who didn't listen to the rules is now dead. The unnamed man was in Texas to get a tattoo on his right leg. According to the report from CNN, he went swimming just five days later in the Gulf of Mexico. It was three days following his swimming vacation that he was admitted in Dallas to the Parkland Memorial Hospital, complaining of unbearable pain in his legs and feet. Then he began to develop a weird purple patch on his right hip. This purple patch blossomed into something horrifying. It's important to note here that this guy also had a fever, chills, and spreading redness down his lower extremities during his ordeal. Then his skin began bursting open where the purple patch was. His skin literally unzipped to reveal the meat beneath in seriously gross sores. Hospital staff eventually figured out he had a bacterium called Vibrio vulnificus, something found in coastal ocean water. He had to be kept sedated because the infection grew so bad that his legs began to blacken and bubble as if he had the plague. But in the end, there was nothing doctors could do to save him, and he sadly died. One of the greatest disasters in Japanese history was the Fukushima nuclear meltdown in 2011. But that's kind of old news. Scientists have recently uncovered a new and even more bizarre threat to humanity creeping out from the radioactive center of the nuclear power plant. Apparently, there's now a breed of indestructible radioactive terror pigs. Details are emerging of wildlife being affected by the radiation that spilled out of the nuclear plant 10 years ago. As you may already know, the area around Fukushima has been devoid of human life for the past decade. Everyone was forced to leave their homes after the disaster and the area has been abandoned ever since, slowly being given back to the wildlife. But with the radiation flowing out from the disaster site, the local wildlife has changed. Scientists were shocked to discover a species of Japanese wild boar ruling the area that was once home to about 160,000 humans. These aggressive pigs have become violent and threatening. They've also been breeding with escaped domestic pigs to create a weird hybrid hog living in a radioactive hellscape. The hybrid pigs don't show any signs of mutation, which is surprising considering how radioactive they are. However, they do contain 300 times the safe human dosage of radiation. When humans do decide to reclaim the area for themselves, they're going to have to fight off an army of pigs. Number 9. Disaster by Jellyfish Only in Japan would a fishing boat literally be attacked and sunk by a horde of giant jellyfish. The fishing trawler Diasan Shinshomaru was capsized after its crew tried to catch way too many Nomura's jellyfish. These are considered the biggest jellyfish in the entire world, growing upwards of 440 pounds each. The fishing boat only had a crew of three men. They were trying to haul up their nets when they realized that instead of fish, their trawling nets were filled with dozens and dozens of these huge jellyfish. Nevertheless, they tried to haul the net up to throw the jellyfish away but the jellyfish had their own plans. They were so heavy and so unruly that they actually managed to pull the boat over sideways and then escape from the net. It was a total disaster and the fishermen were all tossed into the water and they almost died. Nomura's jellyfish are also poisonous and can deliver a toxic sting. This sting can be powerful enough to injure someone and make them drown. Luckily, there was another fishing vessel in the area, and it showed up just in time to rescue the three men before the very large jellyfish could sting them to death. Nobody really knows why, but every year thousands of these giant jellyfish, some of which can grow to be over six feet long, flock to the Sea of Japan. And during a bad year, they often terrorize fishermen and destroy their equipment. Number 8. The Disabled Killer the name Satoshi Omatsu is synonymous with horror in Japan. This is one of the worst serial killers in modern history, and almost nobody knows this guy's name because he comes from halfway around the world. 
His crimes are unspeakable, and yet I'm gonna speak about them anyway. Shitoshi was sentenced to death after he was on a rampage in 2016 and stabbed 19 disabled people to death at the care home where they lived. According to local broadcast radio, Satoshi claimed that people who had disabilities were not really people and that they had no human rights. At 30 years old, Satoshi had worked extensively in the very care facility where he had his mental breakdown. And this is near the capital of Tokyo. Nobody knows exactly what happened in this lunatic's head. He had been working in the care facility just fine until one day he got sick of caring for old people, pulled out a knife, and ran around stabbing everyone he could find. It was one of the worst mass killings in Japanese history, and rare for a country where violent crime doesn't really happen anymore. In the end, it was a whole ordeal. Satoshi claimed that he did it for the sake of society, and in response, the Yokohama District Court sentenced him to be hung to death. Did you know that they have the death penalty still going on in Japan? And it's by hanging, too. I was a little surprised. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Number 7. Attack of the Drunken Man in Japan, robots are everywhere. The country is slowly being taken over by small, humanoid, robotic civil servants. But not all humans are impressed with these changes. According to the Japan Times, a drunk man in his 60s entered his local bank, was thrown into a fit of fury by, and attacked one of the robots working at the bank. This happened at a branch of SoftBank in Yokosuka, and to be honest, it probably wasn't the robot's fault. The man allegedly got into a bit of a spat with the clerk behind the counter and took his anger out on the poor and defenseless robot. It's kind of like someone having a bad day at work and then going home and kicking their dog. Definitely not cool. The man left the bank and ran away but was quickly apprehended by the police, and he was arrested for kicking the robot. After all, it was technically vandalism. After the incident, the poor automatron was moving more slowly, and it had damage to its internal computer systems. Unfortunately, this does not bode well for the integration of robots into society. This particular helper robot at the bank was designed to live socially with humans and to make life easier for people visiting the bank. Then again, maybe it's just this one drunk guy who didn't like the way this robot was looking at him. Number 6. Too much overtime. If you work a lot of hours, please be careful because you may be just working yourself to death. Stress and exhaustion is no joke. In Japan, a woman dropped dead after working too much overtime and this actually happened a few years ago in 2013. But it wasn't until recently that her employer finally revealed the disturbing circumstances around her death. The woman's name was Miwa Sado, and her official cause of death was congestive heart failure. It happened after she worked approximately 159 hours and 37 minutes of overtime in a single month, according to her employer. She'd been working as a political journalist for the Japanese National Broadcaster and HK. To give you an idea about how much overtime that is in a month, it equals about 5.9 extra hours per day, and that includes Saturdays and Sundays. In Japan, the cause of death was called kuroshi. It's a Japanese word that translates literally to death from overwork. This is actually a pretty tragic incident and one of the big pushes for what would become a campaign still going on to this day in which the Japanese are trying desperately to shorten necessary work hours so people stop working themselves into heart attacks. Just a month before Miwa died, she sent an email to her father, complaining that she was busy and stressed and was thinking about quitting. Well, she probably should have thought about that a little sooner, because now she's dead. Number 5. Rampaging Naked Man Police in the Ibaraki Prefecture in Japan recently arrested a foreigner from Indonesia who got drunk and erupted in a fit of mania. Crazy things happen everywhere, even at 7 o'clock in the morning in peaceful rural Japan. According to both police and witnesses, the suspect was a farm worker who had gotten drunk the previous night, somehow lost all his clothes, and ended up parading down the street in the early morning, damaging cars as he went. The police were finally called when the naked man opened the door of somebody's car and began to beat them. The naked Indonesian man started wailing on the driver as he struggled to get away. Finally, the police arrived, but the damage had already been done. The poor driver was in rough shape, and in defiance of the police, the drunk foreigner got on the hood of the car and began jumping up and down. That must have been a pretty horrible thing to see considering the guy was naked and in his 40s. He was then arrested and taken away, probably for mental evaluation. They probably also took away his visa and shipped his naked butt back home. Number 4. Sumo Wrestler Disaster A sumo wrestler in Japan recently came into a bit of bad luck. Sumo wrestling is one of the most respected contest sports in the country but it can be very dangerous. The wrestler who got into trouble was nicknamed Hibikiru. His real name is Mitsuki Amano, and he died in a Tokyo hospital of acute respiratory failure after he landed on his head during a fight with another sumo wrestler. 
It happened during a match in March, when the 28-year-old man was dumped on his head so hard that people in the audience gasped and thought he had died there and then. He lay on the mat not moving and unresponsive. But what's really scary is that the wrestler didn't receive immediate medical attention. It took several minutes of him laying there motionless before medics came on the scene to treat him. Well, because the announcer was busy declaring the winner of the match. Even though it was obvious this guy had suffered some kind of spinal injury and was near dead, it seemed more important at the time to let the audience know who the official winner was. The sumo wrestler was eventually manhandled into an ambulance. He was taken to the hospital and seen by doctors. However, the damage was already done and he died. Number 3. The Super Spreader In 2020, a man in Japan became infected with the coronavirus. Well, so did a lot of people, but this guy was special. He was kind of a jerk. After becoming infected with the virus and being fully aware that he could spread it to other people, potentially killing them, he decided to go out for drinks. He was actually quoted as saying he wanted to spread the virus to as many people as possible. And this happened in early March. The man was 57 years old, a native of Gimagori in the Aichi Prefecture. After health officials requested that he stay at home, he visited at least two drinking establishments and tried to breathe on as many people as he could. But guess what? This guy got some serious karma in the form of death. After trying to get people sick, he himself ended up in the hospital after developing a fever and respiratory problems. He had already been afflicted by cancer and the COVID really didn't help. After spending several days in the hospital, he developed pneumonia and died. It's not clear whether his selfish actions caused the death of anyone he was in contact with. The authorities don't believe it did, but regardless, the irony here is kind of palpable. He tried to get others sick, and the tables turned and he coughed himself into an early grave in the hospital. Number 2. The Japanese Cannibal Issei Sagawa is a Japanese cannibal. He's also notorious and has expressed interest in eating somebody new. What makes this scary is that he's currently walking around free and unencumbered through the streets of Japan. The story of the cannibal goes back to the late 1950s, when Issei was in the first grade and noticed that one of his classmates looked kinda delicious. It was at this early age that he began dreaming of eating young girls. His dreams remained fantasies for the next 32 years, as he pondered the day he would finally get the chance to cook a person and then eat them. All these fantasies burst to life in 1981, when Issy couldn't fight his cannibalistic urges any longer. He was studying in Paris when he met Rennie Hartfelt, a Dutch student who became his friend. They would have occasional dinners, they would hang out, and through and through, Issy established her trust. The first time he tried to kill her, he had the gun pointed at her back, but the weapon misfired. He actually took it as a sign not to eat her, so he gave up. But the urge quickly came back, and the next time the gun worked. He shot his friend in the back, did something utterly unspeakable to her warm corpse, and then he began the preparations. I'm not going to get into the truly disturbing details, but Issy ate his friend and was swiftly apprehended by French police as he tried to dispose of the evidence contained in two suitcases dripping with fresh blood. Issy waited two years in prison before being declared legally insane in order to be held in a mental institution. But when France deported him back to Japan, something got mixed up, and the Japanese authorities were unable to imprison him because of something that went wrong with the paperwork. He's been walking free ever since, and has expressed the possibility that he might kill again. Number 1. Slipping Off the Cliff A woman from Melbourne has died while on a pilgrimage through Japan. According to ABC News, the tourist was walking the Commando Kodo pilgrimage trail on the island of Honshu when the unspeakable happened. Witnesses reported seeing her slip and fall off a cliff. Her body was later found about 120 feet at the bottom. She died in the hospital a few hours later. But just how on earth did this disaster happen? Who just falls off a cliff? The unidentified woman had been walking the pilgrimage trail with one of her Australian friends. And this has been a pilgrimage trail in use for over a thousand years. It's even a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And the only other World Heritage pilgrimage route is the Camino de Santiago in Spain. But it looks like she never meant to reach the end of her pilgrimage. Her time on Earth was over. While peeking dangerously over the edge, she slipped, fell to the bottom, and broke open like a pumpkin. TransAsia Airways Flight 235 was carrying 58 passengers on February 4th of 2015. The flight was on its way from Taipei to the Chinese island of Kinmen. When the unimaginable happened, the plane hit a bridge and crashed into a river below. Somehow the plane's wing clipped the bridge and caused the aircraft to take a sudden dive into the Keelong River. This happened just seconds after taking off from the airport. Out of the 58 passengers on board, including five crew members, only 15 people survived the tragic incident. 
One flight attendant survived and the other survivors were mainly tourists who had simply been heading out on vacation. According to CNN, the pilot was trying to control the plane as it descended but was helpless after the wing grazed the overpass. It reached a height of 1,500 feet when the engine suddenly flamed out and the pilot had no choice but to descend. When the wing hit the bridge, it also hit a taxi and injured two of the people inside. And even though this was one of the worst air disasters in Taiwanese history, it could have been a lot worse. Had the pilot not aimed for the river, the enormous aircraft could have hit a major building and caused even more significant amounts of casualties. Number 9. Plane Crash Shark Attack In February of 1996, 189 people traveling on a charter plane were killed when their aircraft crashed into the Caribbean Sea, just minutes after flying out from Porta Plata in the Dominican Republic. Most of the people on board were German tourists who were just heading back home after spending two weeks relaxing and enjoying the beaches and the beautiful Caribbean sun. Their vacation ended on a rather grim note seeing as all of them tragically died. But the really scary thing is that not all of them may have died specifically just from the crash. The plane crashed into probably the worst possible place imaginable, shark-infested waters. It was early on in the rescue attempts that workers were pulling out the bodies of dead German tourists who'd been mangled by these vicious apex predators. Even more terrifying is that rescuers also discovered inflated life rafts, suggesting some of the tourists had survived the landing and were hoping for rescue. Until those sharks came out of nowhere, ripped them apart, and devoured them. Nobody knows exactly what happened in the hours between the crash and the rescue, but we do know not a single soul survived the incident. And to this day, nobody is exactly sure why the plane even crashed. Which death do you think was worse? Dying in an unexplainable freak plane crash or being eaten by hungry sharks? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Number 8. The Emergency Exit A passenger was hospitalized in June of 2021 after forcing open an emergency exit door and jumping out of a moving aircraft. This is one of those things everyone who's ever gotten on an airplane has thought about, but you never think is actually going to happen. What happens if some jerk opens the emergency exit while the plane is moving, and everyone gets sucked out and flies into the engines? Well, it's a legitimate concern. It's impossible to open the emergency exit while the plane is soaring through the skies because the pressure is too great, but it's still a scary thing to think about. This guy was on United Express Flight 5365, and they were preparing to depart LAX on their way to Salt Lake City. The plane was taxiing from the gate when the unidentified man completely lost his marbles. He got out of his seat, ran to the cockpit door, started banging on it, and then scrambled for the emergency exit. According to local news, his actions prompted a hijacking scare, meaning people on the plane thought he was about to hijack the thing before they even got into the sky. While the plane was still moving, he forced open the emergency door and jumped out. It's a pretty far leap from the door of an airplane all the way to the taxiway. The man had to be taken to the hospital for the injuries he sustained in his daring and quite honestly dumb fall. He wasn't immediately arrested and we still don't know exactly why he caused such a fuss. Authorities are investigating the incident and are trying to determine just what the passenger's motives really were. Number 7. Madison Airport Disaster A plane crashed at the Madisonville Municipal Airport in early 2021, injuring five people and killing one. It was a midnight crash, a single-engine airplane trying to land in the dark. The pilot was about 300 yards short of the runway when he hit a tree, and the airplane ripped itself apart and smashed into the earth. The five people who were injured had to be taken to various hospitals in the region, and were reported stable but in critical condition. The only death was that of the pilot, Apollo Diaz of Kansas City. He was killed, believe it or not, because he wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Seems like kind of a rookie mistake for a pilot to make. When they tell you to buckle up and the seatbelt sign comes on, it's not just for show. Even the pilot can be throttled out of his seat in the event of an emergency landing. Those who were investigating the crash said there were no deficiencies in the aircraft that would have forced the plane to make the tragic crash landing. But they'll look into the pilot's actions and weather. Hey, real quick, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thanks for checking us out. What kinds of videos are you here to watch? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you're enjoying today's video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up and the subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. Fire on the Runway On May 5th of 2019 in Moscow, Russia, an airplane seemingly out of nowhere burst into flames in the middle of the runway. It happened at Moscow's Sheremetyevo Airport after the pilot claimed the aircraft was struck by lightning. Talk about a freak accident! Desperate passengers were caught on video leaping out of the airplane as it was literally engulfed in flames. At least 41 people were killed when this happened. 
So here's what happened from beginning to end. The plane took off on its way to Murmansk. It was airborne for only about 28 minutes. The lightning struck and the communication systems were damaged, and the plane turned around to make an emergency landing. Everything went wrong when the airplane touched down. It was still carrying too much unburned fuel, and the rough touchdown caused the fuel to ignite. Flames burst forth out of the underside of the airplane as the fuselage exploded. Denis Evdomikov, the pilot of the aircraft, was found guilty of causing death by negligence for flying in violation of the established rules and making a rough landing resulting in the fire, investigator said. Following the crash, Dennis said he had actually followed procedures for landing with full fuel tanks to a T, but no fuel had been dumped to lighten the plane beforehand, which is a procedure common for flights that have to land soon after takeoff. Out of the 73 passengers and five flight crew aboard, only 37 of them survived. The rest were literally burned to death as they tried to scramble out of their seats. Number 5. Rampaging Bear A wild animal caused a serious disruption at a small local airport in Sapporo, Japan. A local resident first reported the brown bear to Hokkaido police before dawn after spotting it on the road in the city. Several more sighting reports came in not long after, prompting police to issue a warning. This happened on a Friday afternoon, when the wild brown bear went on a rampage that lasted for over eight hours. The bear attacked several seniors, it plowed through a soldier, it somehow breached a military barracks, and then it ran out onto the runway of the small airport and caused general mayhem. Unfortunately for the bear, officials were forced to shoot the rabid animal dead. There just seemed to be no way to contain it. It was quite the ordeal for locals, who were told to stay indoors while the bear was on this rampage. At least four people were injured, and even though no airplanes were damaged, operations at the airport were disrupted for the entire day. Nobody's quite sure where the bear came from or why it went on its crazy rampage, but it probably ran out of the woods in search of food, and then became overwhelmed as it entered human society. Number 4. An Emotional Landing In Nepal, a captain suffered an emotional breakdown that caused his airplane to crash and kill 51 people. It's amazing to think we're all at the mercy of whoever's driving the plane. And in this case, the pilot's bad day meant a total massacre. The flight took off from Bangladesh, and crashed at the Kathmandu airport in Nepal later that same day. The crash was so intense that the plane skidded into a nearby field and exploded in a great ball of fire. 20 people survived the incident, but the other 51 people were not so fortunate. According to Newsweek, eyewitnesses said the pilot was suffering an emotional breakdown throughout the entire flight. He was smoking cigarettes, acting aggressively towards other crew members, and crying in the cockpit apparently under extreme emotional distress following his colleagues questioning his reputation. All the questions seemed warranted in hindsight considering the guy's mental catastrophe resulted in a real catastrophe. And in case you were wondering, yes, the captain was one of the people who died. Among those who died were 12 Nepalese studying to become doctors at the university in Bangladesh. They were on their way home from vacation after finishing their final exams. A mother of one of the students who died was furious at the report's findings. She was my only ray of hope, Miss Pradhan said, sobbing through a telephone interview. I was thinking good days were coming, but the pilot proved me wrong. I'm now totally helpless. Number 3. Plane versus SUV A tragic incident occurred in a South Florida neighborhood after a small plane crashed into an unsuspecting SUV. It happened in Pembroke Pines. A four-year-old boy was killed instantly when the small plane nosedived into the SUV his mother was driving. The crash also claimed the lives of two people inside the aircraft, which had taken off shortly before from the local North Perry Airport. For reasons unknown, the plane turned around after taking off to head back to the airport, but it was flying too low. The plane hit a power line, which caused it to spiral out of control and land on top of Megan Bishop's SUV. According to a local resident who called 911, the car literally looked like it was cut in half. The sound of the crash sounded like a bomb going off and when residents went outside, they saw everything was on fire. Megan Bishop was able to exit the SUV and tried her hardest to get her son out of the vehicle, but it didn't do any good. Even after firefighters bravely rescued this little boy, he still died later on at the hospital from the injuries he sustained in this freak accident. Number 2. Plane vs. Skyscraper Yet another small plane crashed in the state of Florida. This time, the details are a bit different. The private plane crashed straight into a skyscraper in downtown Tampa, killing the teenage pilot who had taken the aircraft from a nearby airport without permission. The plane was a single-engine Cessna, and it crashed hard into the side of the Bank of America building at the 28th floor. Nobody was injured, and the only fatality was the pilot. 
FBI officials were quick to dismiss the crash as being an act of terrorism. Apparently, the teenage pilot was just goofing around. He was dropped off at the airport to take flying lessons, and the rambunctious teenager was obviously a bit of a delinquent, because when the instructor walked away just for literally a second, the kid locked himself inside the plane and took off on a mission of his own. The airport let the Coast Guard know right away, and they sent a helicopter to intercept the kid, and either because he panicked or was simply inexperienced, he lost control of the aircraft and crashed into the building. And that was the last flying lesson he ever attended. Number 1. The Worst Boston Crash The worst air crash in Boston history happened about five decades ago on July 30, 1973. It was at the Logan Airport when a Delta Airlines DC-9 exploded after crashing into a seawall while trying to land. Every last person on Flight 723 was killed. All 89 of them. Only a single survivor walked away from the crash, but they too died some months later from complications at the hospital. The reason for the crash was due to bad weather, specifically fog. The flight was making a successful approach to the airport when they got lost in the murky clouds of fog. The pilot miscalculated where the beginning of the runway was and came down hard on the seawall. The plane exploded on impact, and most of the people died instantaneously. Danny McDaniel and John Chambers were kayaking together, just a couple miles off the coast of Catalina Island, when they were almost eaten to death. The two men were nearly devoured by a hungry great white shark. It happened when Danny felt a great push on the side of his kayak. At first, he thought it was his friend hitting his kayak with his paddle. Nope. When he looked down, he realized there was a giant great white shark trying to tip his kayak over. They estimated the huge shark at being around 19 feet long, shockingly big even for a great white. It actually chomped down on the back of Danny's kayak, its mouth so huge it nearly cleaved off Danny's leg. Yikes! Amazingly, after a little while, the shark just kind of gave up. It spat the kayak out, disappeared under the water, probably to find an easier meal, and the two men never saw it again. However, they did find a pair of huge teeth stuck inside the kayak from where the shark bit it, leaving physical evidence of their horrifying encounter. They were honestly lucky to be alive. Number 9. Gone Over the Falls In Alberta, Canada, a 60-year-old man went on a solo kayaking trip. He was reported missing from Bowren Lake Provincial Park after he failed to arrive at the portage site. The kayaking circuit here at the lake stretches for over 60 miles and can take people in canoes and kayaks anywhere between 6 and 10 days to fully complete. However, this is only if you know what you're doing. Doing something like this alone is extremely dangerous. According to what the local police said, the missing man probably missed his exit point and took his kayak over the edge of Isaac Falls and then drowned at the bottom. Search and rescue workers discovered his abandoned kayak and a life jacket, but the guy's body was simply gone. He'd been hoping to complete the 60-mile circuit and instead drove his kayak straight off a waterfall to his death. And this is why you should do adventures like this with a buddy. Number 8. Otter Attacks Senior Kayaker A relaxing day kayaking turned into a terrifying nightmare for a 77-year-old woman in Florida after she was attacked by a rather unexpected creature. Sue Spector was with a group of friends, about 10 people kayaking on Sunday morning at Brayton River. Everything was pretty normal until an angry otter climbed onto Sue's kayak and then climbed onto the bewildered woman. Completely unprovoked, the otter attacked Sue relentlessly. But wait a minute, aren't otters supposed to be cute and friendly? Well, according to USA Today, the otter clawed and scratched and bit, ripping apart the poor elderly woman's arms and face. It was such a brutal attack that the woman actually flipped over in her kayak as she fought to get away from the ornery otter. Sue told local news that she screamed and beat the otter with her paddle, but it wouldn't let go. Then she was flipped over in her kayak and struggling not to drown. Amazingly, her husband rushed to the rescue and managed to grab the rabid otter away from his wife. Sue got her kayak upright and had to be rushed to the hospital for stitches and a rabies treatment. But what makes this story so incredible is that it wasn't the first time an otter attacked someone. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission said that there were at least four other injuries from aggressive otters in that same month. What is happening with the otter population in the state of Florida? Do you have any ideas? Let us know in the comments section down below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 7. Dead and Missing a woman is dead and a man is missing after they went kayaking on an icy river in the Canadian province of Ontario. 
Police were phoned after witnesses discovered two empty kayaks stuck on the ice in the Credit River, just north of Toronto. Investigators arrived at the scene and quickly discovered a woman's lifeless body, but were unable to locate the man she'd been kayaking with. Police launched a rescue operation, including aviation services and a team of canine tracking dogs, but they found no sign of the missing kayaker. The dead woman was identified later as Kayla Firth, a university student from the city. Her boyfriend is the missing kayaker, another student named Zach Sutherland. Police still haven't figured out what happened to cause their incident, but after days of searching, Zach's body appeared to have vanished. Number 6. Congo Crocodile Attack Three kayakers were exploring the rivers in the heart of Africa, two of them Americans and the third a South African. They traveled through about a thousand miles of river, through some of the most dangerous waterways in the entire world. They had to stay in a closed formation that was specifically designed to keep away hippopotamuses and crocodiles. But once they reached a quiet stretch in the Lakuga River in the Congo, things completely fell apart. A giant Congo crocodile slipped up from behind them, snapped out of the water, grabbed one of the kayakers in its jaw and ripped him right out of his red plastic boat. The other kayakers had no time to react. The crocodile grabbed Hendry Cotiz from his boat and dragged him underwater. The two kayakers were stunned. They waited as long as they could, but their friend never resurfaced. It was like an assassination, with no time to do anything but say, oh my god, Cotiz was gone, hauled beneath the green water, never to be seen again. They had no choice but to continue paddling and try to find some help. This was especially terrifying for the kayakers still alive, because the guy who had gotten eaten was their guide. He was taking them through the most remote parts of the African wild and teaching them how to survive out there. The fact that he was able to be picked off so easily by a crocodile was frightening and honestly a little ironic. It was lucky that they had already had experience kayaking through places like Pakistan, India, Brazil, and even Costa Rica. They managed to get themselves to the end of their journey in safety. As for their guide, his body was never discovered, and he is presumed dead and eaten. Number 5. The Kayak Killer Angelica Graswald was facing a possible life sentence after being accused of murder and manslaughter for drowning her fiancé Vincent Viafor during a kayaking trip gone wrong. The young couple were living together in Poughkeepsie, New York. They were planning to get married in Angelica's home country of Latvia. However, all those plans came to an end on April 19th of 2015, when they tried to kayak across the Hudson River. Nobody knows exactly what happened out there except for Angelica. But from what researchers could gather, her fiancé capsized in rough waters and drowned because he wasn't wearing a life jacket. However, the prosecutors actually blamed Angelica for his death, saying that she had purposely removed a special connector ring from his paddle and even the drain plug from the bottom of his kayak, which led to his death. She was arrested after being interrogated by police for 11 hours. After being indicted, she pled not guilty. This was a really bizarre case. She clearly hadn't tried to kill her fiancé through an elaborate kayaking murder plot. But she had been criminally negligent in the fact that she did remove the plug. But here's the deal. Vincent also knew that the plug was out. Angelica was his fiancé, not his mother, and yet she still spent two and a half long years behind bars because her fiancé couldn't bother to put on his own life jacket. So how do you feel about this story? Who was really to blame here? Number 4. Deadly Swan Attack in Illinois, a man in a kayak was killed after being attacked by a deadly swan. Yes, a swan committed human murder. It was an ordinary day for 37-year-old Anthony Hensley. He was working for a company that used swans and dogs to keep pesky geese away from properties in the small suburb. While Hensley was in his kayak taking care of some of the swans, two of them suddenly turned on him. A pair of angry swans attacked Hensley full force, causing him to fall out of his kayak. His kayak quickly sank. The birds continued to attack the poor guy, and because he was wearing heavy boots and clothing, he never managed to make it back to shore. Even more disturbing than Anthony Hensley being murdered by a couple of psycho swans is that a group of witnesses watched the whole thing go down. According to the Huffington Post, witnesses at the pond watched as he tried to swim back to shore, losing steam about halfway and vanishing under the water. He left behind two children and his wife, with the children being so young that they won't even remember their father but will forever know that he was attacked and killed by a couple of aggressive birds. What an embarrassing legacy to leave behind to your kids. Number 3. Death by Tribesman A kayaker was killed recently by a tribesman from North Sentinel Island while trying to spread the word of God. This was a pretty big story when it broke, and arguably one of the most dramatic kayaking fails in history. The fisherman warned John Allen Chow not to go to the island, which is located remotely in the Andaman Sea, one of the most secluded parts of India. 
but John went anyway. He packed a Bible into his kayak and made his way to the island. He hired a fisherman to bring him most of the way, then he got into his kayak and made his way to shore. What happened next shocked the entire world. Before John could even reach the shores of North Sentinel Island, he was shot and killed with an arrow. It was a misplaced adventure, he certainly knew it was off limits, said Dipendra Pathak, a police chief at the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. A resident of Washington, reports in social media indicate Chow was most likely trying to convert the islanders to Christianity. He had reportedly given the fisherman a note prior to his death that said, Jesus had bestowed upon him with the strength to go to the most forbidden places on earth. The fisherman who dropped the poor kid off told local police that he then witnessed the uncontacted tribesmen dragging John's limp body onto the beach, and that was the last anyone ever saw of him. Number 2. Hospitalized by Wasps a man from Utah was on vacation with his wife and three sons in Hawaii when they decided to kayak the Hanalei River. Jake Schaff was excited to take his family there because he had heard of an animal reserve and a bird refuge. What he hadn't heard of were the killer wasps. As they kayaked down the river, Jake's kayak hit a branch that was leaning out over the water. That branch contained a wasp's nest, and within just seconds he found himself swarmed by angry wasps out for revenge. Jake tried to protect his family first, pushing them deeper into the river, and then he tipped his own kayak over to protect himself underwater. He knew he had gotten stung a few times, but he thought everything would be alright. What Jake didn't know is that he was allergic to wasp stings. He blacked out and slipped into a seizure while still in the water. He started to foam at the mouth as he suffered from anaphylactic shock. His wife, six months pregnant at the time, had to hold her husband's head above the water as he died. The kids were screaming, everyone was screaming, the wasps were buzzing, it was absolute pandemonium. Luckily, a group of good Samaritans were close by and managed to get Jake to safety while somebody called 911. In the end, Jake was brought to the hospital just in time for doctors to save his life. That's a family vacation they will likely never forget. Number 1. Murdered in the Amazon British kayaker Emma Kelty was murdered while kayaking in the Amazon. She went missing in a region of the Brazilian Amazon largely controlled by drug traffickers and pirates. According to what local police said, Emma was robbed and shot to death before her body was dumped in an undisclosed location, never to be discovered. Three men involved in the killing were arrested in Brazil after some of her belongings were discovered by the Brazilian Navy. The robbers were trying to sell the smartphones and camera they had stolen from her when they got busted. This is obviously tragic. Emma was on a trip down the entire Amazon River, 4,000 miles from end to end. She was 42 days into the trip and almost finished when these bloodthirsty animals shot her to death to make a few bucks from her cell phones. She had been documenting her trip through social media. Her last post described as she had witnessed 50 men armed with rifles in boats. And a few days before that, she had written in an online post that the area she was entering was so dangerous that she was probably going to have her boat stolen and be killed. It was probably meant to be a joke, but not a very funny one in the end. Thanks for watching. How do you feel about going on a kayaking trip after hearing these horrifying stories? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and come back soon for more videos. We'll see you next time.